The most amazing part of this journey is watching how far I've came. I've seen people I looked up to and I was inspired by. Icons now showing me respect. Some of the biggest legends that this culture has to offer embracing me. I credit it all to relationships. Some of these legends even became big brothers to me. I've watched some of my peers become superstars in their own right. Some of the heaviest figures in other genres have embraced me. I've been thrown into some awkward situations at times. I've always landed on my feet. But I've prided myself at being one of the personalities that's not scared to be outside. I think that's what helped my interviews. I've been able to interview some of the newest rising stars, some of the biggest artists in the game, to even the legends. The topics change, but the respect doesn't. Sometimes we watch relationships come full circle. <laughs> I've watched my relationships take me around the world. I've DJed in front of 20,000, 30,000 plus many of times. But I think that's the game changer right there. That perspective when you stand on that stage and you see those thousands of people, it gives you a new vantage point, gives you a new eye line, gives you new opinions. And with that being said, I'm here to speak them all. It's the Truth Heard Podcast. You're welcome. Yeah, so, oh man, shake the dust off. I ain't been here in a while. Um, it's the True First Podcast. How y'all feeling, man? It's Punch, if you don't know. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Um, I haven't spoke directly to the people in a very, very long time. I want to get down to everything. Um, I want to get down to what's been going on with me last couple months. I want to get down what was going on towards the end of the uh, tour, the whole Treyway shit, whole Takashi shit, uh, just everything. Uh, talk about Bobby too. I just spoke to Bobby last week. So it's going to be tons of, tons of shit, man. Truth Hurts Podcast. It is very brash. I want to just get... You know, just say what the fuck I want to say. You get what I mean? And why not? So, where to start? A lot of people have been asking me, like, where have I been? What have I been doing? And if you really want to know this, I, you know, I've been here. You know, I've been uh, absorbing life as it comes. I've been chilling, uh, just watching, uh, understanding the game, trying to feel uh, how things were moving. You know, New York music and New York culture, whole rap shit is such a unique thing. So it's like, I think at times you got to watch it because it's like who really matters and who doesn't. Um, and obviously, uh, all my involvement with uh, the whole Treyway, Takashi shit, you know, we impacted the city, you know, we did. But I'll just rather get into that since that's the oldest thing and then get up to where um, where we're at. Cool. So, a lot of people want to know sometimes, like, even, like, how I got involved with Six. And um, so, Push Gonna Shove, I've been trying to get a hold. We, we, we link up. And uh, at this point, like, Gummo is just, you know, really, like, coming into something. You know, we don't really know what Gummo is really going to become. And uh, we watched the video, and it's this whole big viral sensation. You know, Bloods is in the video, and Gang, and the dog has a bandana, the grandma has a bandana, and it's this whole shock value shit that we've seen repeated like 10 or 15 times now, like there's a million videos with a million bandanas, but you know, when the first time that we seen that now, it was like, well not the first, but because y'all are going to be crazy, it's more about the first time that we've seen it like become in a while, uh, the Gummo video comes out, uh, we link up, we're in a studio, uh, that day, I just remember it was a lot of a lot of people in there. Some of the familiars was around. Shoddy was there that day. Uh, Trife Drew was there that day. Uh, you know, uh, Cannon Dozens. A bunch of people was there. Uh, Seiko. Um, I don't know if Otto was there. But, you know, just to, you know, the, as the typical people that we were, you know, the, how the team was designed at that point. Um, and then Kuda comes. And he records the shit out of that record. That shit goes crazy. We start talking. We did the first interview that day, which... He shot them academics. You know, that's my guy. He loves saying he the first interview. Look, check the YouTube upload dates. That's my boy, though. Um, but we did that shit in, like, the hallway of the studio. Uh, and that's, like, literally, like, minutes after he did Kuda. 
And, you know, it, it, it became something unbelievable. And I, I remember talking to him and being like, yo, this is so fast. And he's like, yo, Punch, I got this whole way. I'm just going to keep flooding the hit records. And he's just like, yo, I just want you to fuck with me. I was like, yo, I've been playing Gummo. This is like early. Like nobody played it at this point. Like nobody. We there. The record starts to get mixed and everything like that. And even when it came down to Gummo, a lot of people uh, like to take credit at times about how that shit even got on radio. Takashi didn't even have a radio edit. There was no clean edit for the song. I'm the one who had called um, Six and his manager at that point, Chris, and was like, yo, we need a radio edit. He was like, yeah, I know. nobody plays this record. It's cool. And I said, yo, bro, give me the record. I'll get it on radio. It's not it's not difficult. You just got to know you know, who to do it. And then I guess as a DJ in New York, if I call another DJ and I'd be like, it's go. Especially at that point, like my climate, especially to the DJ culture was, um, I was the guy who kind of touched certain talents right before it went. So a lot of people knew that I had the eyes on the internet. You get what I'm saying? Like I was super early at that point on designer, obviously super early on Young and May, uh, cast, just a bunch of shit that was going on fresher. You get what I mean? Like it wasn't it wasn't rare for me to stand on something and be loud about supporting an artist prior to that it was cool to do so. So when they sent me the clean version, I remember calling up uh self, Will, uh Drewski. And those were the guys, you know, Will and Drewski, to be very real, the first person to ever play Gummo anywhere is DJ Will, the Friday night. Then Drewski played it the Sunday night. And then Flex played it the Monday. That's really how it go. No opinions, no I think is that's what happened because the, the radio version got made the Friday morning and the first person on radio who had the access to it, even though Camelo had it and enough, Will was the first person to play it. Shout out to DJ Will. But um, Union, all that Power 105, it's important to give niggas they credit when they really, really do it. Drewski, first person on Hot as well. But then Felt Master Flex broke the record. So there you go. First on Power, first on Hot, and the nigga who really broke the fucking record. And then everybody kind of fall fucking with it. Clue, Self, Camelo, Enough, everybody. Shouts out to all New York Radio. It's dope. Um, the shit just kind of just picked up after that. At that point, Takashi was just like, yo, bro, I want you to be my DJ. I want you to fuck with me. Like, I saw what you did with your old artists. Like, let's take this way out of here. And I was like, I was excited because I haven't been on the road prior to that since about February or March, uh, right before I stepped away from the whole Young and May camp. And um, then we did interviews all summer. That was my transition from that to that. So cool. Uh, Kuda comes out. We go do the video around like Halloween time. Um, Utica and Fulton for all my 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 Brooklyn people, uh, right by Boys and Girls, and you just seen 100 Bloods, 50 Crips. It was just it was something that we never seen before. You get what I'm saying? Like with the gangs and everybody was there. Uh, it was it was really something crazy, man. You know what I mean? Like they had A Trays in there, they had G Stones, they had Billies, Mac Ballers, Apes. It's all of this gang stuff in one thing, and it always love. And it's amazing to just watch it back. You think, you look at that video. If y'all go back and look at my outside, which um, that's the first time that you really ever got to see the whole team in the rawest form. So if you look at outside uh, episode one with me and Takashi, um, you're going to see Shadi in there. You're going to see uh, Auto Billy, Seiko Billy, uh, a lot of shit. You see so much people in there, you know, from that side. And, you know, it just continued to cultivate and... When you think back at, at, at all of that shit, it's like it was a mind blow. Because when the record came out, everybody was going crazy. The video comes out, World Star, boom. It was like three, four, five million views in the first week, which was unbelievable at that point. And it just continued to go. Literally, fucking 30 days after that, he rolls out Kiki. And I remember when he hit me, it was like, yo, I'm going to put Fetty Wap. And I was like, Fetty Wap? And he was like, I'm going to put Fetty Wap, bro. I love Fetty Wap. I, I-, I want to be Fetty Wap. I was just like, all right, cool. Fetty Wap it is. And then, you know, A Boogie obviously already had his own heat. So niggas was fucking with the A Boogie move. It just was a, it was a little weird at that point because Fetty was uh, pretty quiet at that point. And then when you hear Fetty Wap on the record, it's crazy. Fetty killed that shit. Shot the Fetty Wap, uh, RGF, all that shit. And um, then comes the Kiki video shoot. We uptown in the Bronx. Uh, we moving around. They brought up like two coach buses. That has another episode of Outside. Uh, and you just vlogging it. You just see everybody outside again. All of the faces, all of the gang, all of the streets really supporting the shit. And um, at that point, a lot of people started questioning, yo, is Six real right? Is he not? Is he? And everybody, you know, it, it was there. He was stamped and sanctioned. And as everybody just continued to go by, we just started to watch and kind of understand and just see this enigma 6 uh, 9 like, blow up. 
And um, I remember, like, at that point, I was still DJing for him, but I used to start getting angry at him because I'd be like, yo, Six, we got to tighten up. Like, we can't just go places. At this point, venues are starting to get nervous at him because we just did his show. Uh, we did a show, uh, like, towards the, la- the couple last week's uh, December 2017, and we did, like, three or four shows back-to-back. We did one in Connecticut, and we did two in New York, one in Queens and one in Manhattan. And um, that got a, another whole episode, too. You could probably type it in um, where we vlogged that whole shit. And you see um, us in Club Amadeus. Check that out. And um, you see our first show. That was our very first show we ever did. A lot of people was getting mad at me, too, on the footage and be like, yo, why was I cutting the records? Takashi had this vision of being like, start records, stop it. Yell, break it, start it again. And everybody was just like, yo, why are you doing this? Nigga, I was following what the fuck he wanted to do. And I didn't agree with it, really. And that's when we started to design better shows. And I started to get more and more comfortable with him to where that we started to really make a whole team about the whole rapper DJ shit and uh really developed that shit and what really came on from that is like just money just literally money shows we started killing uh then just came a lot of negative activity because it was so much rumors of fights and shootings all of this shit it's just rumors alleged this alleged that takashi goes and big club fight nigga would be in the crib and it's a big club fight the, the everybody in takashi cramp was fighting and it just it just started getting crazy and at that point i started telling them like yo this is gonna be really bad for business because the the clubs in new york are already uh against rap you know like really being in the forefront and now everyone is looking at you like you're the bad guy so this is not a good idea but he, he he wasn't really receptive to really changing up kind of how he was doing it. But um, so a lot of people always think nobody tell him nothing. Everybody told him everything. He just don't really listen. You know, he's the driver of this. At that point, I'm the DJ. So maybe I'm the shotgun. Maybe the manager's the shotgun. Maybe I'm in the backseat. I don't know how you see this car, but he's the driver. You get what I'm saying? And. It is what it is. Time goes on. He keeps getting into shit. And I'm like, yo, bro, I'm going to be honest. I, it, we go on a roll once and like it ends. It en- actually ended in a fight in the club. And I'm like, yo, bro, bro, bro. Like, we got to get this shit super tight. We got to start moving right and proper and professional or the shit not going to make sense. Um, and I remember I had missed a gig or two to go out. And I was just like, yo, I can't be missing money for this. Now, he's still super viral. But in reference to shows uh nothing crazy you know what i mean like nothing crazy uh everybody is still kind of around and then they got into um everything that we see you saw all of the all-star weekend shit where he was banned from la and he went out to la and did all that shit i wasn't with niggas at that point by that point i was like yo bro if you don't got shows what's the point you know and i i, I always kept it to where on to me and six the relationship was like yo bro i'm about professional shit like we can't just chill like I already did the touring shit. I've done cool shit. I've helped with artists. It's not that exciting for me to just be outside, just going to another city. Like, all right, cool, let's just go. So the LA shit, I'm like, we don't got shows? He's like, nah, they all got canceled. I said, all right, cool. So I stay. And that's when he was running around. People come find me, doing all of the suck my dicks and all of that shit. And it started to really get connected to kind of like who he was. And then came a couple weeks later, you see uh, South by Southwest, and that's when you see all of the Houston shit. Well, nah, prior to that, you see um, the, the, the All-Star Weekend, that's when they got into the LAX fight shit. And um, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a weird time for me. Because even on that, to keep it on pace, because I'm going to tap on this also, that's when niggas had recorded Bobby on the phone, and Bobby was like, oh, I'm not fucking with him. You get what I'm saying? Like, yo, we not fucking with him. And um, I remember talking to Bobby shortly after that, like, yo, bro, I'm over there. He cool. Uh, Fetty had came home. Uh, Fetty Luciano came home maybe two months prior. And Six already had put him in the Kiki video, posted him up, helped get the wave up, helped get the attention. You know, I did the outside with Fetty as well when he came home. And it was just a whole big wave because, you know, GS9 is family at the end of the day. We from the same town, um, same part of Brooklyn and everything like that. Uh, hundreds, 90s, all the same shit. And um, so, you know, making sure that Fetty was, you know, greeted and supported and doing all that shit was a big thing for me. I always used to talk to Rowdy a lot and Bobby same way and then uh, making sure that that bridge was there. So when Bobby went rogue, it was hard to hit for me because I was like, shit, we going so hard to make that this shit, you know, feel like it's cohesive and it's showing love. What's up? So I spoke to Bobby. Bobby had actually apologized because he's like, I don't even know, son. Nigga could be cool. I just was just jacking it. Yo, punch my fault. And then on the interview with me and Bobby Schmurda, um, 
on This Is 50, the second one, because I did it when he first got locked, and then I did the second one, you can hear that where he spoke about, you know, just him feeling like he just jumped to conclusions off of other niggas' words, so I respect Bobby for all that, too. And um, Six ain't taking no way, because Six understood. Uh, none of the trayways took it no way. Everybody was still mad love with GS9. Then it goes, and they got into the South by Southwest shit, or the J-Print shit. It was just so much issues at times, where I'd be like, yo, Six, like, nigga, what we doing here? And he was like, yo, don't worry, I'm going to keep giving hit records. It's not going to stop. And then he put out the mixtape and um, Day 69. The shit started picking up. Then he put out Billy. And it just it was just nonstop. So every time that you kind of yell at him or be like, yo, bro, what the fuck are you doing? The nigga gives you another hit record. And that was the other thing that people neglect. Every time we look at this and we think about like, yo, why niggas ain't stop him? You really stop niggas where it starts affecting the work. His work was never affected. You get what I'm saying? In reference to shows, niggas like, yo, he lost money on shows. They were calling him for Europe for a trillion fucking dollars to go out there. So when he went out to Europe the first time, I had a bunch of shit going on at This Is 50. A bunch of gigs. My shit was just getting back right because I had lost a bunch of gigs clearing out dates for the clubs um, to go on tour with him. And then his initial tour got canceled because of just bad situations with booking and management. I think that's when he had just switched his management to. And it just started getting out of hand. So when Takashi came back home, um, from Europe, uh, that's when I uh, made sure, like the whole time he was away, I was making sure I was on 50 back. Like, yo, 50, look at this, 50, look at this. And at first 50 and get it. And I'm like, yo, look at this, here's Kiki, look at this. He's like, right, that's cool, that nigga look wild. Then he seen Billy. And Billy was the record that changed 50's whole shit. And 50 said, yo, bring the nigga up here, I want to see this nigga, man. I want to meet him. And then, you know, we spoke about 50. I'm like, yo, 50, I'm interviewing 50. Like, yo, do your thing. I'm going to pop up in the middle of the shit. We're going to go make it go lit. It's going to get viral. And that's exactly what happened. I didn't tell Takashi what was going on. So me and Six was talking in our interview on This Is 50. And that's like the second time that we caught that. And um, that's when we were like, it just all clicked. And that's when 50 came and said, yo, leave the little nigga alone. And then that's where all that shit came from. So that's how that went. So that was another cool moment for me because I was on, uh, you know, 50 is like a big bro. So I'm on him to be like, yo, this is what I'm doing out here, big bro. Look at me, look at me, look at me. And he starts noticing it. And then he noticed it. He was like, yo, this shit looking all right. Let me talk to the nigga. And then he met Takashi, thought he was cool, and started fucking with it. And um, that's where the whole 50 and 6ix9ine relationship began. And it started to flourish. Obviously, you see 50 doing the whole father-son shit, all the joking shit, all of that. It just started to continue to grow. And, um, you know, I think at that point, you know, 6 playing records and... Just literally, just from that point on, it was just going crazy. He just did uh, shot Gotti right after that. He did the DR shit when he was out there um, and really was just putting on because he just kept putting on fucking hit records, you know, just straight up and down. Again, a lot of people looking at him like, yo, it's a joke shit. And he just, he wouldn't stop. Um, he came back from, he had another run in Europe and um, he had went out there, and when he came back, he was like, yo, bro, I don't want to do no more shows ever again without you. Like, what we did at the end of last year is what we got to do every single way. I got to bring you out to Europe. I just don't want to do no more shows without you. What we got to do to fix it? And we went, we got the business right, and, you know, the money was lit. It made sense for me to basically uh, stop chasing the club shit for a moment and hit the, and hit the road. And, um, you know, just being back around at that point, now he's almost six or seven uh, records in, you know, uh, is is like it's becoming like some really legendary shit at this point. Where I'm just like, holy shit, because we would talk all the time when he was on the road, always speak, and he's always like, yo, I got another one, yo, bro, I got another one. These niggas going, so we're always speaking. But for me and him to be like official DJ, official rat, it it it, it fell off for about a two or three month. We come back on tour. We start going. First place that we did, we was trying to get some flights booked. It was last minute. Six is like, yo, bro, let's get this shit moving. And then when he came back home, that's when they got into, uh, you know, right when we were about to make this other big run. Uh, that's when the bad scenario happened where he had got um, robbed and kidnapped and all that shit like that. And a lot of y'all think that that shit was like some type of like trolling shit. All his trolling shit, we can see is a trolling shit. That wasn't a trolling shit. So that's when everything switched up for him. And he just stopped. Like, doing the extra, I'm running with everybody shit. He just was like, yo, I'm shrinking it down. Um, I'm making the TMG security. I want this shit to be super uptight. I want everybody to be on it. Yo, bro, punch. Yo, come fuck with me. Shotty was there. Shotty calling me. Yo, bro, we got to get the business right. We can't be out here fucking around. Because every time I would speak to Shotty while this is going on as well, I'm always like, nigga, 
business, business, business. And I kept pumping this. So right after that whole uh, situation with the kidnap, then they put out Fifi, which is the Nicki record. That shit goes super viral the next day. And then the Monday, because he put that out on a Sunday, the Saturday night is when he got the, the kidnap shit. The Sunday morning is when Fifi came out. The Monday, I go link him because I ain't seen him in a while. He like, yo, bro, I just want everybody that's originally around me. I want niggas to be back. So I right, cool. I go. We go to his spot. It's security in front of his crib. Niggas is searching me to get in there. Shit crazy to me. I was just like, yo, what the? They searching me, pat me down. Like, it's crazy. I go in there. He like, yo, bro, I, my whole mind is fucked up. Shoddy in there. Everybody. It's just like, it's a whole different mindset it feels like a whole different team because everything was just different and at that point it's just um me shoddy six uh it just was different i think crippy was there too by that point um and yeah he was he definitely was he was he was he was and we're supposed to go out to florida for some shows and takashi is just like yo bro let's book the flights and then he could not get everybody a flight I'll never forget. We was in the crib and he like, yo, we can't get everybody a flight. And he like, all right, cool. We're going to figure that out. I'm like, yo, let's shoot some shit. So we had went and um, uh, we was there. It's me. I mean, Cannon, uh, Six, Shoddy. Everybody's there. And we start shooting the what would be our third interview, which is the shit in the middle of the street with Takashi and Shoddy. That's where I split like half the interview with both of them. That's also where 6 9 finally got a chance to officially on record speak back to Bobby and appreciate and accept the shit and sh and remind niggas it's love. So that's another thing where you see like the Bobby and 6 9 relationship just continue to grow. I got 6 and Bobby to talk around that time as well. Um, and then you see Shadi. If you look back at that interview now, like if you stop and press pause and go look at that shit, you're going to hear my mindset with Shadi. It's like I'm trying to get Shadi to understand that it's really all about the business, it's all about the bread. I'm getting 6 9 to be like, let's talk about the positive shit. Let's talk about Nikki. Let's talk about all of that. And that's basically what's going on. Like, I'm like, let's get this shit serious. Let's get away from the street. Let's get towards the money. Let's get everything as clean and as proper as we can. And um, everybody was with it. You know, and that was something that was exciting to me because it's like, now we locking in. Now we're going to go get big money. And it really turned like that. The money started going out the roof, started getting booked for way more. We did a Florida run. That vlog is like the stupid vlog. That's on YouTube as well. If you go Google the stupid vlog, I think that got like almost a million views now, about a million and change now. Um, that's when we went to Miami on the whole private jet shit. And everybody was out there. That's when he was like, yo, let's just book the jet. And I thought he was bullshitting and to think of book the jet. And we all hit the PJ, and we was all out there, and we was in Florida. And um, that's when everything just changed. That's when Shadow came around. Shot the Shadow, big bro, and the whole team. And 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 it, it just, it, it really just, it, it changed. You know what I mean? Shot the Sam. It just all, it felt more, it felt more proper. It felt more professional. So we going around Miami. We did bookings out there. We killed it. Uh, we sold out. We did a concert. We did a bunch of shit. Went to Miami. That's when we did a bunch of shows. We linked up with Tori for his birthday that weekend. Uh, strip club, mad shit. It just was crazy. Bumped up my boy Scrap, free Scrap. You know what I mean? And um, and it just was crazy. Like if y'all go see that vlog is up there too. This is all, everything I'm going to say, I'm going to go online with the vlog and do everything like that and all of the time periods and everything so that y'all can go and understand it. Because there's so much lies and exaggerations and bullshit. it just be stupid. So while that's going on, we start doing it. Six comes back and he's like, yo, let's hit Europe. And then we did a Europe run. We did um, we did another Europe run. That's where we hit Finland. Uh, we hit, I think, Germany. We hit like two, three other countries. I can't remember. This is where it starts getting blurry on where we went. We went, we did this big ass concert, aerial shots, big shit, the weekend festival and block fest. It's too crazy. Some other shit was in, um, I can't remember, but it was some crazy shit. Uh, it was just amazing. 20, 30,000 people crowds, super huge. It was amazing. And then that's when me and Six are really doing like monster festivals. Now you start to see the temperature change and really start to see like, yo, 6 9 is really like one of the biggest artists in the world because we're literally going to fucking Europe. And at that point, what is this? This is September, October. So we're talking, nah, this is, this is not, nah, this is August. So we're talking about that's the eighth month, eight. He came out October, three. This is a, a 10, 11 months into his career and he's already doing sold out festivals in Europe. Something to be, you know, 
um, accredited for. And that's when it started to get great. We started getting more into music. Six would play me all of the music that he getting. Um, and he'd be like, yo, listen to this. He'll have it. He'll have his reference records. He'll have everything like where he's like, yo, you like this? You don't? I like that. I don't. And that's when you just start to see that he started to understand uh, what we needed to do to kind of make this shit fucking work. And music was just serious to him at that point. He was talking about putting out the album. He knew that he wanted to drop in the winter. Um, no, he wanted to drop in the fall. So he was trying to get everything in it. He was trying to drop in the fall because that was another reason why. When we came back, when we came back home and we was back in America, uh, we came back for my birthday weekend around that. Well, we didn't come back for my birthday weekend, but it was my birthday weekend. And we did Made in America. And that's the first festival we ever did in America. And sold that bitch the fuck out. Sold that shit out. Destroyed that shit. You see what we do. All of that video when everybody's running to the stage. I went on the stage. They gave me the mic and I just started yelling. Nigga, we in the motherfucking building. Boom. Yo, where y'all niggas at? Boom. It's motherfucking Treyway, Treyway. Everybody started going crazy. That's where all of those videos go. And you see everybody running to the stage and doing that. I'm on the stage. Takashi not even on the stage yet. They don't even got no logos up. This is the real fucking story. I'm dropping balls. Boom. Boom. Shit was unbelievable. I literally remember looking and I'm looking at... They're coming by the thousands running from the back. It's amazing. One of the dopest fucking moments ever. And then, you know, the Rock Nation, the Rock Nation niggas is looking at us like, yo, play the record. I'm ignoring niggas out the corner of my eye. I keep dropping Treyway, more bombs. Cause I'm looking at niggas come. I'm like, no, we're gonna until niggas come up to this stage and make me play this record. I'm not playing it. We buying time because they're running. It was unbelievable to fucking watch. And that's it. Once I start and we drop that Kuda, they know how we do it. And then by that point, Takashi do his prayer. He do on the side. We run out. Shotty was up there. Crippy was up there. And um, man, we fucked that shit up. We seen Meek earlier that day. Uh, Joe and Bede was out there too. It was just, it was fire. We went, destructed that bitch. Like, made in America, shut the shit down. And that was like our first American festival. That was a big note for us to be like, look, niggas bodied that shit. Because at the end of the day, it's only me and Takashi on that stage. You know what I mean? And we we rocking the fuck out of that. You know what I mean? Like, we really doing what we supposed to do. And uh, shout out to whole Philly, Made in America. Unbelievable. One of the best days, you know, of my career performance-wise. Just amazing and fun. Um, we leave there. We about to go back to Europe now. And this is where we missed a bunch of European dates and people started killing Takashi because he like, I don't want to go. I want to finish my album. That's why I remember that it got pushed back. He wants to finish his album. Uh, shout out to Joseph, my big bro. Joseph, I love you. That's like my big bro in Europe. Um, that's family. And um, he looked out for us so much and came out here, gone to Kashi, and we got everything together. And we flew back out to Europe and we sold out like a 10 or 15 country run, city, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it was just unbelievable, bro. We literally was everywhere on planet Earth. It was by far the most just elation. It was just iconic where we was going. We were going into these countries, Belgium, uh, Man, Germany, France, Italy, I don't know. It's so many different places. Russia, and it's like a blur. You get what I mean? And um, Copenhagen, Sweden, Switzerland. I just keep going. And we do these shits and sell out all these shows. And that's when he put out Stupid on the road. And we started performing Stupid before Stupid was even finished. Being written. Started doing it. And then we went to Dubai. We had got added Dubai, which was fucking crazy. Went to Dubai. We ain't come back home. Went to Dubai. And y'all see what we did in Dubai. Viral city. We did Dubai. Finished stupid. Um, shout out to, um, uh, you know, Bobby. He got recorded on the phone and uh, got his verse ready. And that's when we added that to stupid. And then it becomes this iconic Bobby Schmurter 6 9 And I remember when 6 first played it, I was like, yo, this is Rowdy Flow. Like, we got to get Rowdy on it. And he was just like, um, he was just like, yo, um, I need to get Bobby on it and Rowdy. I was like, yo, if you can get them both on it, fuck it. You know, because it's obviously the computer's flow. We're not acting like it's not. Um, it was amazing. I was excited trying to get Rowdy on it. I spoke to Rowdy, spoke to Bobby. We was trying to get everything together. And six starts rushing. And when he feels like he's rushing, it's like nobody else can stop this kid so we like chill don't worry don't rush he like now nah, we got to put it out i told niggas it was coming out on sunday like the video the, the song wasn't even fully recorded and he told the fans it was coming out on sunday he told the fans that the video was coming out there was no video no clothes none of us we ain't know where we were shooting nothing who was out there it was um william masher trife drew um me dawn six that's who was out there um that's who it was when we was in dubai really really doing what he was doing 
And, um, you know, those three helped put together the video. And I remember talking to him, he like, yo, bro, you think it's ready, it's ready, it's ready. And he loved it. He started promoing it, doing the dance. And y'all see all that shit? Like, we beat that shit the fuck up, too. And um, then comes Stupid. Stupid comes out, super viral. We watch it. I leave Dubai early because they want to keep chilling in Dubai. And like my whole emotion is the same as always been. No matter how much money we made, no matter how cool we was, I was by that point we was away for like a month. I was like, I miss home. If we're not doing shows, I'm not just chilling in Dubai. So, you know, I left. I came home and then everybody was there. And while we left, well, right in the middle of that, that's when you see like the feds raid his crib. And that's when that bad news came in and nobody really knew what was going on. And um, you see Sarah had came out to Dubai to meet us because it just felt crazy. Shout out to Sarah. Mad love for Sarah. Mad love for Sarah. Mad love. Um, super cool. Sarah came with us the first European run too. Oh, he's in Finland and all of that. Uh, Y'all seen those pictures too. We out there doing all of that. Cool. Sarah on stage with us, everything. Um, so when we just came back, she flew out to Dubai and then... And that's how she got in the video, obviously, and all that shit like that. And it just it just was fire. You know, everything was just winning. We was killing. Uh, when he came back home from Dubai, we had to um, hit up a couple dates in the Midwest. I think we did St. Louis. We did Kentucky, Louisville. And then we had did Detroit. No, not Detroit. Grand Rapids. When I was in Michigan, they told me Detroit is not Grand Rapids. Two different shit. Shout out to the D-Town. Shout out to Grand Rapids. Whole Michigan. All that shit like that. And um, we was out there. We killed that shit. And shout out to Rook. And... Um, my G-Unit niggas, and we was there. We did it, and shit sold out, and then that's when we went to L.A. When we was in L.A., that shit was crazy. We was watching. Uh, the L.A. shit was crazy, but y'all already seen what goes on. Uh, you know, all of the back and forth with the 400 with Slim and YG and all of them, and, uh, you know, that was a tough situation for me because I had new Slim from a while back. And when Slim even came out to New York, me and Slim went out to his listening. So when all of that conflict was going on, I just tried to stay out of it. I ain't jack either. You know, it, was, it was uncomfortable because it's like you cool with somebody and now they're not cool with your boy. So you just stay out of it because at the end of the day, that's them. When it started to get super mixed up with the whole, like the teams getting involved, look like niggas was about to fight and do all that shit like that. It, it never really got to that point. Thank God. Because at the end of the day, it don't make no benefit to either side. You get what I mean? Like, when y'all go back and look at the uh, footage where niggas is yelling in front of the hotel by Complex Con, there were points where nobody was in front of us to stop us from running up, and there was points where nobody was stopping them to run, and nobody really did nothing. And in and, and the long run, it's better that way because everybody stays safe, ain't getting no conflict, nobody got arrested, nobody got hurt. That's what's supposed to happen. Not, not supposed to, but it's better to happen that way where nothing goes on and we can move forward and continue being professional bro they already look at us like we retarded hood niggas on a constant so when we got opportunities to be to end right and safe it's always better you get what i mean and um that's what happened on that and uh that was just me shoddy and six at that point realistically yeah that was just us so again we in la together shoddy's there everything is cool everything is love that's la and then i leave la a little bit early because i got enough frustration with six because he just did some wow shit he did some wild shit. He was throwing, throwing around bread mad loose, and I just wasn't fucking with it. I left. I went early. Um, when I came back home, um, he was still in L.A. I came home to everybody being like, yo, are you good? Are you good? Are you good? That's when the video shoot got shot up over there with Kanye and, and Nikki. Uh, cause we was there, we saw the mansion. I went with six when we was looking at the mansion, picking the video ideas. We saw everything with the directors at the, I was with the director meeting. We had the meeting with Kanye earlier that week too, with Kanye there showing niggas like the whole Yeezy season shit. And he was showing niggas, um, about what he wanted to do with the verse cause niggas wrote the verse and Kanye really was just all with it. You know, uh, it was amazing. It was going to be some iconic shit, which is terrible again, that another moment doesn't ever get to like. Uh, come out or blossom or anything because I don't know how far the video got because I already left because I was a little annoyed with the kid. Came home. Came home that Sunday. This is where it all, it's all going to catch up. This is not a last week, realistically, that we had. We came home the Sunday. Um, I had a party in New York, this Afrobeat party, and that's where you see that shit went viral. And um, I had Takashi out there and it's the first time he had Afrobeat and that's where that shit went super viral. All of the whole Afrobeat websites and all these niggas and Burner Boy Rec was playing and it was just crazy. Everybody's looking at it like, yo, Takashi's in it. He's supporting it. And that's the first time I seen Takashi there. And that's actually the last time I got to see him. So he came because he knew that I wasn't really fucking with him. So he was like, yo, bro, get over that shit, man. Fuck that shit, man. Come, I'm linking. I'm pulling up on you. So he literally, um, he pulled up and he came. And that's the last time I seen him. That was the Sunday 
before everything went down. Shotty's hitting me, yo, bro, where y'all niggas at? So everything is still love. You get what I'm saying? Like, everything is still love. This is where it starts getting weird to me. Uh, that Tuesday comes, and that's when niggas is hitting me like, yo, bro, you looked at the internet? Yo, what's going on? Yo, what the fuck? I look at the internet. Takashi, yo, I'm firing everybody. I'm firing everybody. I don't give a fuck. Fire my booking agent. Fire everybody. Fire. They stealing from me. It's crazy. I'm like, I ain't know where none of that shit came from. Because when we on the road, uh, you know, the whole MTA, it's the booking agents. I'm keeping it real. I'm not here to save nothing or just be nothing but just straight authentic. They was doing mad managerial shit for us to keep things together because Six didn't have a manager. A lot of people thought Shadi was the manager. Shadi was not the manager. Um... Six was the manager. So, I mean, yeah, Six was his own manager in reality. So, there's still got to be managerial shit. It's not like Six Nine is going to book niggas' flights. Let's think about that. So, at the end of the day, they're doing other things for it. Getting hotels, getting the Airbnbs, doing all that, getting the cars. Because we driving around in bulletproofs everywhere because this nigga telling everybody to suck his dick, come find us. So, we driving around in bulletproofs like it's G-Unit in 03. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy like that. All, all, all said and done. He goes, I'm calling, I'm calling him, he not answering his phone. I finally hear from him that night, and I'm like, yo, what's up? He's like, yo, what's good, bro? I'm like, what you mean, what's good? What happened, nigga? Where we went wrong? I just seen you two days ago. Oh, no, nah, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about everybody else. I'm like, what's wrong with you, bro? Why are you on the internet doing that? Why are you wilding since when we go to the internet to deal with internal issues? Yo, punt, nah, man. I found out some shit. Yo, I don't know, man. We're going to go to Breakfast Club next week. It don't matter. Everything going to be cool. We still going to roll out the album. Don't worry about nothing. I'm just like, I right, cool, man, but yo, you can't really like, I'm not jacking that hoe, you're not fucking with Shotty. you was just out there, nigga, when we was out there before everything got calm and walked away peaceful, you don't know what's going to go on with, with, with anything, because Six got beef with Mad Gang out there, mad shit, and there was a bunch of times, multiple times where Shotty put himself in front of that, you get what I'm saying, so when he's the next week like, I'm not fucking with niggas, Shotty nobody, I'm just like, it, it was weird with me, I wasn't jacking it, cool. The next day, I'm chilling, I look on the internet. I see a picture of uh, Six and Charlemagne. And I'm like, what the fuck? Nigga, we're supposed to go to Breakfast Club the next week. Six goes, hits Breakfast Club on his own, does his own shit, goes up to Breakfast Club by himself. And that's where you see that whole new version. I'm not talking to niggas. Niggas stole from me and all that. And this is where I start to look at Takashi awkwardly. Because, first of all, like, anything goes on, anything. A nigga gets beat up, a nigga falls, we do anything. Like, nigga, I could buy y'all a water from four years ago and find that receipt with the snap of a finger. Go to the Chase app, go right there, look back. Takashi goes, yo, nigga stole $3 million from me. I go, oh, shit, that's crazy. I'm waiting for the nigga to show niggas the receipt. Show me where someone stole $3 million. I, I want to see it because this is blowing my mind that shoddy or the booking agents could do that. I just want to just see it and understand it. Still to this very day, the middle of March, we ain't seen no receipt. So that's another reason when I start going, yo, bro, what the fuck is wrong with Six? Because this is starting to be weird. We don't see no paperwork. Charlemagne is there. Yo, let me see it. He's looking at the text. He's scrolling through the phone mad fast. I'm just like, all right, cool. This is weird. I'm here, Shadi. What are you talking about? Nigga, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm waiting to see these receipts that I stole too. So I'm just like, it's just weird. Now I'm looking at my two friends, my two mans, my bros, niggas who I'm going around the whole world with. We traveling, we killing, we doing stadiums, doing all this shit. And now I'm looking at niggas on odds, but it's in front of the whole world. So this is already frustrating. Time go on, time go on, time go on. The Friday, that's when you see the live. He on live. He like, fuck Treyway, all this shit like that. I'm like, yo, you got to be kidding me, man. I'm, I'm calling him like, yo, what's going on? He like, yo, bro, we're going to put out the album next week. Don't worry about nothing. Everything is cool. Like, yo, I'm just like... Yo, Six, what's going on with this nigga? Like, I'm like, yo, bro, we got to link up because, like, you moving erratic. I want to understand what the fuck is going on. Like, it's weird. You saying fuck the shit that you've been repping for the whole last year. A day later, um, I spoke to Shadi and Six that Sunday early and just regular shit. Yo, what's up? Nigga, it's so much confusion shit. Shadi, like, nigga, I'm out here doing what I got to do. What else gonna happen, nigga? I got other artists. I got other shit going on. Until we figure out what's up, I can't stop. I'm here six. What's up? He like, yo, bro, we gonna link up. Don't worry. And that Sunday night is when everybody got arrested. So when you understand how this whole shit play out for me, it just was like, it was just weird. It all, everything was cool. And then the last seven days, it just went into like shuffle. Then when everybody's inside... And everybody's talking crazy and they snatching up niggas and they snatch up the whole gang free everybody. You get what I'm saying? Like real shit. 
and everybody starts, you start hearing these numbers the next week, you know, I went out and I did that video where I was just angry and that shit ended up going viral. I'm just like, yo, these niggas got families, they human, stop being haters and angry people. Just let's see what the fuck is going to happen before everybody turned into investigators. You know what I mean? So like when everybody turned into investigators, I was just like, what's this about? Cool, I said what I said. Everybody reposting it. Everybody's hitting me. I'm like, I don't got no comments. Me and Ack went on live. We was talking lightly about it. Um, but again, it was still in that heavy, heavy investigation stage where I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know why niggas was arrested. I didn't know what. About a week later, we start seeing all of the charges, and this shit start looking crazy. It's overwhelming to look at where I'm looking at my friends facing 40, 50 years. Life. This is life for some of these niggas. And I'm like, that shit was so... Like depressing, it was like a punch in the gut. You get what I'm saying? When I stand back and I look at it and I go, yo, what the fuck is going on? Like, my niggas is really about to be like, nah, this can't be. So I just kind of fell back and didn't want to post because niggas is under my post every day. Yeah, I hope your niggas go to jail. He deserve it. Fuck these niggas. Yeah, and yeah, niggas stole from him. So now when Six changed the narrative, it went from, yo, this is the loyalist team ever to now we not fucking with nobody. And I'm just like, it just went downhill. And again, I'm looking at my, my 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 team, my friends get destroyed and get pulled from every which side. And it just started to just get worse and worse and worse. And then then comes the 6 9 was going to be killed by people. And then everybody's like, yeah, they was going to kill him. And we wait two weeks later and then the, 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 the phone call comes out and the phone call is, yo, bro, we going to super violate him, which we all know super violate in New York words is, to slap up, son, beat up. Niggas wasn't going to kill him. It don't even make sense. But whatever, my nigga, you know what I mean? Like, if niggas wanted to kill him, they wouldn't have stepped in front of him in L.A. They would have let the L.A. niggas kill him if it was like that. It don't make sense. You didn't even have to kill him. You just didn't have to defend him. You, you're trying to defend his life seven days before, seven days later, you're going to kill him. It don't make sense. But nonetheless, this is my perspective on it. Um... You know, because, you know, he's saying fuck Treyway. So niggas got, felt away. And I feel like niggas would have pressed him in on some man to man. Be like, yo, you got to square up. If your brother wild out, you got to square up. You get what I'm saying? Straight up and down. If you telling you tell your right hand man, suck my dick. Your right hand man might slap the shit out of you. He's not going to hook you to kill you. But he's going to slap the shit out of you. Y'all going to have to tussle it out like men. Because niggas is grown ass men. This whole, these are grown ass men and he's a little kid. That's not true. That's a father. Nigga, the nigga helped change my life. Don't get none of this shit confused. I got a, I had it. Like, what Takashi and this whole shit did for my life was unbelievable. The amount of money we made, the amount of shit, it don't even make sense. That's why this shit was such a weird thing for me to tap on. But I got to just tap on it. And instead of going and getting paid by all these other platforms that are offering me big bags to come do interviews, I said no. Let me just say it on my accord, and then if I decide to speak about it after on another platform, it's cool. But I'm going to do it on my terms, on my shit. I didn't want to get, you know, like, my shit bought out first. No, I'm going to say it on my shit, on my terms. You know, on this matter, at least, is how I felt like I wanted to talk about it. Time goes. Then starts coming all of this, yo, Takashi snitching. He's moved into a new jail. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, this can't be true. I hope this shit's not true. I hope it's not true. Uh, I'm getting words from niggas inside, you know, niggas is getting hold of, I'm getting words from inside, it's like, yo, it's not looking good, and I'm just like, this shit is tough to digest, so now, the rumor comes out, I gotta say it, because everybody's saying it, the shoddy inside of rumor, I don't see any truth to it, I've never seen it, I don't know, I don't know what anyone does for 24 hours of the day, just my opinion, I don't believe it, but we continue, now they start going, yo, they got, niggas is fucking his girl. Niggas stole from him. Niggas trying to kill him. He should snitch. Now, let me explain snitching for every one of you niggas that keep repeating that. Let's get this very fucking clear. There is streets and there are civilians. There is gang and there is regular. Let's just be very clear. If you decide to play by streets, gang, if you pick up a bandana at any point in your life, you are now in the streets. Cool. We're going to get back to that. If you are a law-abiding citizen, you pay taxes, you are a regular person, you are not in gang, you are not doing illegal shit, you are a civilian. Okay? Different world. Cool. 
in the world of a civilian, if a nigga bumps you and you feel a way, I would tell the nigga, call the police, bro. If a girl gets beat up, miss, call the police. If you are on gang, niggas could kill your man in front of you. You cannot say anything. You have changed your rules. Let's get this clear. When you were in the street, you agree by saying, by doing, by a part of, at any point being a part of, you can't snitch no more because you agreed to different rules. So as long as you are gang, you have agreed, I don't see, I don't say. That is what it is. I'll give you an example. If you're in a gang, you hate this nigga. You want to kill Tom. We're going to kill Tom. We hate him. Tom robs a woman. The police come. Tom gets caught. Later, they think that's him. The police say there's only one witness. You're the only one that saw. When the police comes, if you are gang, you hate Tom. You can put him in jail right now. You can identify. All they need is your word. You got to now say, I don't know, officer. I didn't see anything. You grasp that, right? Because you agreed to the street. I don't give a fuck if it's your enemy. I don't care if he just slapped you in the face. You are in the street. You cannot speak if you are a civilian. You see a crime from eight blocks away. I am suggesting you go to the police and speak about it because you live by different rules. No one can be mad at you. No one. Like the streets be teaching people wrong. Nothing is wrong with the police. Nothing is wrong with, with telling. Nothing is wrong with cooperating if you are a civilian. It's cool. It's okay. Street niggas are not mad at civilians because they know what code you've signed up for. But street niggas, let's get this very clear. When you are gang, you are gang. So now when niggas to get back to the moment, now that we've cleared all of this up as clear as day, and they say Takashi's cooperating, I look at this and I stand back and I'm, I become speechless. I can't believe it. And niggas is starting to defend it, saying, nigga, they tried to kill him, they fuck his girl. I don't give a fuck if they dropped a spaceship on his house. Once you say you something, you got to follow by codes. So all of that telling and cooperating shit, I can't stand by. And my gang, no. But I I am someone who is aware of the rules. And if you, if you go against your rules on either side, that's dishonor. I'm a man first. And I lead with honor. I lead with... My own pride, I lead with my own character. Honor over anything. And if you want to be dishonorable and start talking and going against your code because it's cool and comfortable for you, I'm not really with that. And that's more power to you. But I can't move forward with it. So I had love for six. Nigga, we did legendary shit. But bro, how can I be, how can I, how can I be comfortable if, if, this is all based on if what we are reading is accurate. Because I literally got love for him. But then when I seen that, I can't stand with him. It's two different things. You get what I'm saying? Like, y your brother could do something that you don't like. You still love your brother, but you can't rock with it. You, you know, they've already crossed that code. If a family member, God forbid, goes and does something dishonorable to a kid or something like that, you, you don't, don't stop loving them. You just... That's it. They're not there. Because it goes against your honor and what you believe in. So, you know, quiet is kept. I don't know what's going on. But if everything I'm hearing is true, I had to speak on it. Because no matter what goes on, if you are a part of anything at any point, if you go and niggas about to rob the bank and you get in that car, you signed up. So you a snake if you tell on anything that goes on in that car. Cause no one forced you in the car. Many a times on my come up, yo punch you get in the car. And many a times I say no, cause that's not. I didn't want to sign up for the code. I didn't want to. And nobody was ever looking at me funny because at the end of the day I led with my honor. Like yo, that's not shit I'm on. I'm chasing different shit. And niggas can respect me. I'm respected by gang all around the fucking country. I'm respected by real niggas. Half of the outside shit, I'm in the middle of the trenches with some of the most dangerous niggas y'all niggas that ever meet. Comfortable. Because at the end of the day, I'm not doing too much. I'm never faking. I'm never putting on a front. I'm just my damn self. And authenticity reigns ahead of everything. Gang or civilian. 
So I digress to say all of this. If what we hear is true and you are condoning this, you don't understand the rules. And I advise if you've never been in the street, if you don't know street niggas, do not speak on this because there is no way you either are signed up for the rules or you're not. And if he's doing this, man, I'm disgusted. And if it's all a lie, I apologize, bro, for even throwing any of this on you. But you got to understand me as being me that I got to stand up for something. And as I stand up, a lot of niggas, yo, if six come home, what y'all niggas doing? I said, we not going to do nothing if he comes home unless there's another eight other niggas coming home with him. <laughs> you get, Like, free everybody, man. You get what I'm saying? Shotty got two kids on that private jet vlog that we seen. His sons was with us. You know, these things affect things. So I know some of y'all niggas hate Shotty and hate Takashi. Fuck all of them. I want all of them in jail. I know how y'all weird ass niggas think. But y'all just got to think past it sometimes. Jail ain't the place for no one. If you got family, you got kids, niggas got moms, girlfriends, wives, daughters, all that. Family, friends. Nigga, all that shit just stops. This jail shit is crazy. This street shit is crazy. I advise most of my street niggas not to be in the street because the rules is crazy. It's tough. And they ain't easy to live by. So I tell niggas all the time, leave the fucking streets. Don't confuse what I'm saying. Leave the streets. It's terrible there, my nigga. It ain't lit. It ain't fun. Leave it. But if you there, you signed up for it already. Simple shit. You know, I had to just get all this off my chest. Shout out to Bobby. Um, Bobby called me last week. And um, Bobby just like, yo, Punch, what's up, nigga? And I'm just like, you know, it was a relief to hear him. Every time I hear Bobby, it's a relief. Because, you know, that's my bro, man. And, you know, I didn't know what time he was going to be on. Because I know when you in jail, you got niggas telling you how to, how to think. And niggas out here telling you what's going on. So I ain't know if niggas is like, yo, six of snitching. Look, if Punch ain't do that, look, you would have never, you know, because like I said, if we go back to earlier, since the February and March, April, I'm making sure that Bobby and Six is on one page. And Bobby said, nigga, straight up said, nigga, how I'm going to be bad at, 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 at what the fuck that man did, nigga? I fucked with him because of you. But at the end of the day, I can't be mad at what goes on. You co-signed it when he was standing up. He do that shit. We can't fuck with it. Next topic. What's up, nigga? How you feeling? And shout out to Bobby again for shouting me on Vlad. A lot of, a lot of things. Let's get to that. I saw two or three media outlets. You know, there's a couple of media outlets that get tons of views for dissing me. Shout out you niggas, man. You know, shout out all you gal clowns. I, I, I see you niggas. And a couple podcasts, you know, um, co-signing shit. Yo, punch to this and punch to that. When Bobby was talking to Vlad and Vlad goes, yo, how you and Takashi got involved? He said, yo, my brother P, punch. So for everybody who tried to make it seem like I wasn't doing certain shit or giving niggas light, which that was a little corny, you know, it is what it is. Um, Bobby Schmurter cleared all that shit up on how that even connected. So we off that. Back on the Bobby. Um, that's my guy. You know, he's in great fucking spirits. You know, he got about 20 months left. You know, he about to be home. It's going to be good energy. What you think is going to happen, man? You know, the nine is coming home. Rowdy on his way back. I haven't spoke to Rowdy in a while. I got none but love for Rowdy too, but... Hope I hear from him soon. You know, I used to talk to Rowdy a lot. You know, when Bobby was in a box for a long time, he didn't talk a lot. But, um, yeah, free Robbie, free Bobby. You know what I mean? Free every single nigga in the nine. Free Rasha, free Quano, free A-Rod, free D-Boy, free everybody. My nigga, free Slice, free all them niggas. You got to understand. A lot of niggas be saying free Rowdy, free Bobby, and I understand. Those are the popular guys. There's other niggas in jail, man. Free everybody, bro. Like, I don't want none of my, anybody I know, even if it's your man, I don't want nobody in jail. Jail ain't cool. That's why I tell niggas all the time, man, once you pass a certain age, my nigga, y'all got to do better. My nigga, stop doing this shit. Stop chasing everything. Stop chasing ego. Stop letting ego put you back in jail. You know what I mean? Like, it's too good out here. It's too much access of money. Get to it. You know what I mean? Like, let's get to the motherfucking money. You know what I mean? It's straight up and down. But a lot of people ask me about, yo, uh, you know, I just felt like I needed to talk about everything. That went on. I was quiet about it. I didn't know really what I wanted to say. I didn't know how I wanted to address some of it. And I'd just rather uh, talk about it on my own time. And that's kind of like where we at now. Uh, it's going to be, it, it's something. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's tough to look at. Because, you know, while Six was um, still out, my boy Jeezy Mula came home. 
Free Jeezy Moolah. He comes home in October. Niggas back in fucking jail. It's tough to fucking even deal with. You know, Jeezy was my guy. Started working uh, Jeezy's project, getting that shit on radio, getting niggas to fuck with it. And then, you know, he got caught up in some shit and just got locked again. Hopefully that boy come home soon. There's too much jail shit around. It just was too much negativity. I had lost some close friends. And I just fell back, man. You know, it's tough to just keep taking these hits. So I fell back. But where I'm at right now, just to give y'all the close things, I got five projects coming out. Five. Five. I'm going to tell you out of five before I get out of here. This is one of them. This is the True First Podcast. I'm back again. All right? I want to do this every week. I'm going to talk about the culture, talk about whatever's going on, talk about whatever y'all want me to talk about. There it is. True First Podcast is one. My second podcast I got coming out is called The Turntable. It's all about DJs. It's all about the culture. It's all about the music. That's really what I want to talk about, the music with the DJs, with the guys who play the records. I love DJs. I'm a DJ. So I want to talk about the shit, the lifestyle, the brand, all of that. I got a third podcast called Homebody. That's with me and Chanel Hart, the beautiful Chanel Hart. You might know her. Chanel Hart, Triple X. Beautiful girl, man. Y'all go figure it out. Fire shit. It's going to be crazy. We talking about mad sex, mad wild shit, girls, relationships. It's fun. All right? All right. And then I got two interview platforms coming out, Okay. I have moving, moving. That's for like my new artists. If you got shit bubbling and you starting to get your shit together and you moving, then this is where we need to talk. And then I got the domino effect, which is for the solidified artists with these big ass stories and these long, you know, processes and journeys. And we want to hear about it, you know? So my big artists, I'm going to do domino effect, very detailed, sit down interview, talking about this led to this and this led to that and this led to that and moving is for my niggas on the come up. Five projects, the turntable, Homebody, Truth Hurts Podcast, all three podcasts. Uh, we got uh, Moving, Moving, and we got Domino Effect. And that's Punch. And it's 2019, and it should all be rolled out pretty motherfucking soon. So I appreciate you. If you are still here, I appreciate you. Subscribe, all of that cool YouTube shit. But I got everything. I don't know what I'm going to do. I got all of this Treyway footage. I might just put it out and just get it out and be like, fuck it. Um, I might hold on to it. I don't know what we're going to do, but I got mad shit. You know, I got all of our European tour. I got mad other shit, shit in LA. I mean, I got a lot of motherfucking content. So, I don't know. I'm going to decide. Y'all let me know. If y'all want to see it, if y'all fucking with Takashi still, y'all want to see all the unreleased shit, you let me know. And we'll roll this shit out. But other than that, shout out to everybody. Hopefully, y'all just feel me. I was being personal. I was telling my story. You get what I'm saying? My angle, my eyes. How I see it and how I know. A lot of people was talking and they've never been around niggas. And they getting big fucking views and big fucking clout talking about shit. It's comedy. It's comedy, man. If you ain't see these niggas on my page, it's very difficult for me to think how close they were really were to the team. Because, nigga, at what point were they around? But, you know, not here nor there. I appreciate y'all. It's the truth hurts. You're welcome. Boom. Yo, I always thought that this was real corny, but since we're here, we're going to do it. So listen, if you like what you see, subscribe. That button should be right here or there. Or it's in one of the corners. If y'all still here, you know how to fucking use YouTube. Subscribe, all right? <laughs>